the unit circle. Recall from our previous discussion of triangle trigonometry that if I have a right triangle I can name one of the other angles and use that to identify the opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse sides of the triangle and use those as a way of defining the trigonometric ratios. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Our goal now is to take that triangle and stick it inside of the coordinate plane. And when we have an angle in the first quadrant, we can draw our triangle exactly the same way. And then if we make a couple of nice uh, shorthand assumptions, we can really get some work done on our triangle. But notice that if we have a point here, x, y, the adjacent side of the triangle has a length of x, and the opposite side of the triangle has a length of y. And this will work for any point in the coordinate plane. We can replace opposite and adjacent. We can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out what the hypotenuse is. But for convenience, let's take things a step further. Let's restrict ourselves. Instead of looking at any point anywhere, let's look specifically at points that lie on some nice circle. If the circle is centered at the origin, then the radius of the circle is the hypotenuse of the triangle. And the hypotenuse of the triangle is the radius of the circle. And again, this will work for any point in space. To make our lives even easier, let's choose the unit circle. Unit here means one. We're going to pick the circle of radius one and only draw our triangles inside that circle. But we want to be able to handle this whether the triangle is in the first quadrant or the second or the third or the fourth. And the way that we manage that is by using reference angles and knowing that in a reference angle the point here, in this case I drew a triangle in the second quadrant, the point here has an x-coordinate which is negative. So the adjacent side will have a length of the opposite of x and the opposite side will still have a length of y. In the third quadrant, x and y are both negative. And in the fourth quadrant, uh, y is negative while x is positive. But our rules are still going to be the same as far as how we define the trigonometric ratios. Sine of theta is the opposite side, which is now y, divided by the radius, which is now 1, cosine is the adjacent side, which is now x, divided by the radius, which is now 1, 
and the tangent is the opposite side, which is y, divided by the adjacent side, which is x. The new thing that we have going on in these other quadrants. Well, in the first quadrant, we know that things should work the same way they do in triangle trigonometry. Namely here, everything is going to work out positive. In the second quadrant, y is still positive, but x is negative, which means looking at our definitions here, sine is still going to be positive, cosine and tangent will be negative. In the third quadrant, x and y are both negative. So sine is negative and cosine is negative and tangent will be negative divided by negative, which is positive. So in the third quadrant, tangent is positive, sine and cosine are negative. Then in the fourth quadrant, the space where x takes on positive values, but y takes on negative values, well, sine will be negative, cosine will be positive, tangent will be negative. So we have cosine positive in the fourth quadrant. Nice simple mnemonic device, reading that in the counterclockwise standard order, ASTC, all students take calculus, or all science teachers are crazy, depending on whether you want to um, ingratiate yourself towards your math teacher or annoy your science teacher. <laughs>